There's no better way to spend your time than in a gigantic open world game. Welcome to the Skill Channel, and today we're looking at a bunch of games filled with side quests, dynamic events, and really big game worlds. The open world genre really picked up during the last console generation, but these upcoming games continue to push the limits. With hours of gameplay and worlds that resemble real life cities, open world games provide tons of replayability and excitement. Let's take a look at the top 10 most anticipated open world games. Power is earned. Power is taken. Triad Wars is set in the vibrant city of Hong Kong and the Sleeping Dogs universe. Developer United Front Games is creating an online open world action adventure game where you rise to power as a criminal kingpin of the Triad Underworld. It brings a lot of familiar gameplay from Sleeping Dogs, but now you're chasing down real people online. The game is based around controlling the cities through turfs. Turfs is where Triad Enforcers control their criminal empire from. They allow enforcers to produce and store goods and money, as well as launder money into gold and hire contracts in the form of racket bosses. Turfs are a major part of Triad Wars, forming both the strategy and competitive portions of the game. There's also tons of unlockable vehicles and weapons that are obtained through combat favors or purchasing them through the in-game store. Triad Wars is going to be an interesting new take on the open world game's crime genre. Triad Wars is currently in closed beta and United Front Games is planning to release on PC in 2015. There's something brewing out there. This land is about to be scorched by Gastown Wrath. There's another reason to revisit the Mad Max universe besides the movies. The Mad Max game is designed as a standalone with its own story. The storyline follows Max as he attempts to find and reclaim his iconic jerry-rigged car, the Interceptor. Car customization is more than just a big focus of the game, it's also a lot of fun to manipulate. In his pursuit of creating the perfect car, the Magnum Opus, Max has access to a variety of aesthetic and functional upgrades. These include nitro, armor, weapons, and even defensive measures like spikes to prevent enemies from jumping onto his vehicle. As Max progresses through the game, many of these upgrades can be scavenged during missions or hijacked from enemy cars. Avalanche has emphasized driving in this game, and its driving skills to provide the excitement and open world combat. It's one of the few upcoming games that requires a constant, seamless attention to action, and a reliance on quick reflexes in order to achieve objectives. Whether you're evading other enemy cars or taking pursuit, the huge environment and its detailed topography of sand dunes, cliff faces, and natural obstacles is a perfect playground for boys and their toys, namely big guns and fast cars. In the same vein as other free-range action-adventure RPGs like Fallout and Borderlands, you can also rest assured that Mad Max will feature a huge environment to explore. Split into a variety of areas, each has their own unique history tied into the main narrative and includes secret objectives such as time trials as well as enemy strongholds. The more missions and enemy forts Max breaches and secures, the lower the threat level will decrease for each area. There is also an unmapped area of dust storms and unknown dangers called the Big Nothing, and is a prime location for finding rare items to upgrade the Magnum Opus. Mad Max launches September 1st on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Syndicate is the ninth game in the Assassin's Creed series, and this time it takes place in London during the Industrial Revolution. The story follows twins Jacob and Evie Fry as they navigate the corridors of organized crime during the Victorian era and fight against the established order, controlled by the Templars. The series continues to streamline stealth and combat with continual improvements. Playing as two different characters opens up new possibilities. Players can control Evie, the first female protagonist in the series. However, Jacob is a brawler, specializing in close combat, while Evie is a stealth-oriented attacker. 
Each character has a different set of skill trees and thus a different playstyle. There will be the possibility to switch between characters between the missions, however each mission will be attributed to only one of the twins. Majority of the game will be played as Jacob. London has more restrictions on open weaponry and therefore much of the combat will be carried out through fistfights. It will be similar to Unity, but at a faster pace. In addition, the rope launcher system is introduced. This can help players rappel up buildings and zipline between buildings and carriages. Syndicate's version of London will be 30% larger than Paris from Unity. London will consist of six boroughs, Westminster, The Strand, The City of London, Whitechapel, Southwark, and Lambeth. Playing as Jacob, gamers will establish Great Britain's fiercest gang. Syndicate releases on October 23rd on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Homefront The Revolution is set in 2029, two years after the events of Homefront and four years into the Greater Korean Republic's invasion of the United States of America. After the victory at San Francisco, some western states had successfully been retaken by Americans. In the meantime, the GKR has continued its eastward advance and has invaded and occupied most of the eastern United States, including the city of Philadelphia which has become the GKR's center of operations in the region. The new Philadelphia is heavily policed and an oppressed environment, with civilians living in perpetual fear as the Korean People's Army patrols a multitude of districts. A second rebellion is brewing, however, they'll be needing more than sheer willpower to take down the technologically and numerically superior KPA. The original game was a short, linear story, but the revolution will be an open world game. The player will have to scavenge parts from buildings and stashes to create weapons and equipment. The KPA's weapons are all fingerprint locked, and as such they will have a sizable advantage over the resistance. There will also be side missions where the player will be called off to carry out tasks like assassinating a high ranking KPA general or steal a KPA drone. Homefront will be running on the next gen CryEngine. The first person shooter promises a large open world and a variety of tasks to discover and complete. Homefront The Revolution is potentially releasing in 2016 on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Dead Island 2 is taking place in a replicated version of California. It won't be 100% accurate to scale, but it will have some memorable locations in Los Angeles and San Francisco. The same first-person gruesome melee combat returns. The multiplayer is expanded up to 8 players and is referred to as a localized MMO. Online play is the default, and the world is persistent for as long as you are logged in. The developers intend to have endless replayability, but they didn't say how leveling would scale or how much DLC would be released. Dead Island 2 is definitely going to be different than the previous game and may be a long-lasting game for open-world fans. The Dead Island 2 release date is still to be announced. The Division is an all-new Tom Clancy game published by Ubisoft and takes a whole different approach to shooters. Players will assume control over the Strategic Homeland Division, which is also known simply as The Division. You will lead your team through a crisis-hit New York in an attempt to shut down a virus that is wreaking havoc throughout the city. Of course, enemy foes will be trying to stop you at every turn. With a third-person view, The Division will be as much a mini-RPG as it will be an all-out action game as gamers will be able to level up with their team in a number of ways. Characters can be customized and will carry a backpack that can be opened up to level up weapons, add skill points, and activate new gear. 
The landscape will be semi-open and will feature time-based night and day cycles, which will actually play a role in how you complete tasks and missions. For example, during the day you may be forced into more destructive ranged firefights, while at night your stealth skills and melee attacks can be employed more. The Division is scheduled for release in March 2016 on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Confuse them. Destroy everything. Decide who lives. Ghost Recon Wildlands will be the first in the series to feature an open world, which is a framing environment we're seeing more and more shooters turn to. It also removes the futuristic setting that has been with the franchise for the last three games and moves back to a more traditional environment reminiscent of earlier titles in the series. Ghost Recon has always been among the most tactical shooters around, and Wildlands does not break with that winning formula. Set in Bolivia, you are tasked with taking out the Santa Blanca drug cartel that is up to no good in the region, destabilizing the local economy and causing a threat to the United States. As we mentioned, this is the first open world game in the series and Wildlands offers an ambitious environment that includes nine different landscapes, jungle, desert, and mountains among them. With time, day, night cycles, the game feels hugely dynamic for a shooter, and coupled with the open world, players can approach combat in different ways. Nighttime lends itself perfectly to stealthy attacks or even passing by an enemy unseen, while the day lets you open up and start spraying bullets if you want. With a strong melee system, the stealth aspects are really robust, and for added depth, there are also vehicles to use, including parachuting out of helicopters to reach mission points. Wildlands will be available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One, potentially releasing in 2016. Fallout 4 takes place approximately 200 years after a war over resources that ended in a nuclear holocaust in 2077, roughly the same time as the events of Fallout 3. The setting is a post-apocalyptic retro future, covering a region that includes Boston, Massachusetts, and other parts of New England known as the Commonwealth. Unlike previous titles, Fallout 4's story begins on the day the bombs dropped, October 23, 2077. The player's character takes shelter in Vault 111 with their family, just to mysteriously awaken 200 years later, unaged, and is the Vault's sole survivor. Player freedom is the main focus of the game, giving the player the ability to roam anywhere on the map or leave a conversation at any time. Another huge feature is the customization. It was revealed that the game will include 50 base guns, as well as the mods such as barrel types, grip types, laser focus, to customize them with a stated amount of at least 700 combinations. Power armor can now be modified with a jetpack and other personalized elements, as well as letting you choose different types of armor for each part of the power armor. This includes the ability to use pieces from multiple different types of power armor. Another major new feature is the ability to craft and deconstruct settlements and certain buildings. The player can select certain in-game objects and structures and scrap them. The materials gained from this are then used to build however the player sees fit. The crafting system requires the player to hook up their towns with working electricity using a dynamic power line system. Merchants and non-player characters can inhabit the player's town, for which the player must provide sustenance by growing food in makeshift patches and building water sprouts. Random attacks can occur on your settlements, so players need to build various defenses such as turrets and traps to fend off enemies. Fallout 4 releases this November on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Let's go, pal.
In Just Cause 3, everything is destructible. The island of Medici is run by a cruel dictator who plans to take over the world and has built a lot of egotistical monuments in his honor. The philosophy of Just Cause 3 is to beautify the island through destruction by taking out the bad guy's statues, prisons, communication towers and bases and liberating the island. Avalanche really wants the players to get creative, so things like explosive barrels, vehicles and grenades can all be used to chain destructive events to wreak the most havoc possible. Movement will be incredibly fluid. The new grapple mechanic allows near instant transportation to the tallest towers and mountains. Players can feel Rico's weight as he propels up the side of a tower, adding to the immersion and visceral feel of the gameplay. By using the grappling hook to gain momentum, the player can fly pretty much anywhere at breakneck speeds. Use the wingsuit to cover more ground and gain altitude up to heights where the grappling hook can't reach. Rico is also free to alternate to the parachute, which is much more stable than the wingsuit and perfect for aerial dogfights. The Havoc physics engine means there are no scripted events. Every action has a result that follows the laws of physics in the game. It also means that the same bridge won't fall down the same way twice. Just Cause 3 uses exaggerated physics that allow you to do almost anything you can imagine, because you're not bogged down by boring real-life forces like gravity. The Havoc ultimately means fewer cutscenes and more variety for hours upon hours of gameplay. Just Cause 3 will let you set the world on fire December 1st on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Just Cause 3. The most anticipated game on our list is also the most epic. It's been years since the 2008 release of Metal Gear Solid 4, and The Phantom Pain is a huge leap forward. This game is intended to be truly open world, with a massive environment that you can explore. There's traveling through cars, tanks, horseback, or even on foot. The game also features dynamic weather that affects the entire game world and a realistic passage of time that can be manipulated with the Phantom Cigar. The close quarter combat has also taken a leap towards realism. The player now has several options when they approach an enemy from a stealth position. A button prompt will appear that allows Snake to take them into a chokehold and drag them out of sight from other guards. They also have options for interrogation and killing guards. Interrogation causes Snake to pull his knife, which can then result in the soldier giving information, such as ammo and secret passage locations, which are then marked on the map. Enemy ammunition is automatically acquired when taking hold of enemy soldiers. When behind low cover, enemies can be pulled into a chokehold. When near a group of enemies, CQC takedowns can be chained together. Enemy weapons are automatically taken when grabbed from the front and can instantly be used against them. Like Ground Zeroes, there are multiple points of entry that you can scout out. There's base building and a real-time day and night cycle. This game will be very comprehensive and not just a linear run-through. The story structure has been compared to a TV series, with small missions completed individually that tie into the overall story. Kojima himself stated that the game is no longer going from point A to point B, and that is 200 times larger than Ground Zeroes. What upcoming open world games are you most excited for? Let us know in the comments. And subscribe to the skilled YouTube channel because we've got more coverage on cool action games. If you enjoy our creative, well-produced videos, then consider supporting the Skilled channel directly by using our Amazon affiliate code when you shop online, or making a small monthly contribution through our Patreon. Just click the card or the links in the description for more info. Your support helps us make more of the content that you enjoy watching.